Audio on Black Lives. I think it's time to play a little. Seven Days to Die. All right. Uh, so I've unlocked Mini Bike uh, last episode. So I'm thinking I would like to build a mini bike. Uh, so let's see what we gotta do to get that done. Uh, okay. So I need a car battery, an engine, handlebars, chassis, and two wheels. What have I got? I have got no battery. No battery, no wheels. All right, what do I gotta have to make a wheel? Iron, polymers, oil, coal, acid. Uh, iron, acid, polymers. We have to go get some coal. Nope, I got coal. Coal. Wasn't there, wasn't there another thing in there? Oil. Forgot the oil. Oil. All right. Wheel. Two of them. Craft it. All right. Uh, I don't think I can make a battery. I think I'm going to have to go... Oh, no. I could... If I had access to a chemistry bench, make a battery. Uh, you don't suppose you have to make one of those. I can't believe I don't have one. That's crazy. I'm going to go knock down some cars. All right. Handlebars. I need mechanical parts, spring, headlight, electric parts, short iron pipe. Oops. I need mechanical parts. Electrical parts, short iron pipe, uh, dang it, I've got no memory. Oh, headlights and spring. Right, I was thinking spring was in there. Headlight, all right. Mini bike handlebars, check. Okay, and the last thing I need is a chassis, which is uh, duct tape and leather are the parts I'm missing. Uh, there's leather, there's some duct tape. I've got stuff to make more duct tape. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I do need one more book. One more bucket tape, yes. Uh, no, I've got a ton of bones here. And I've got cloth fragments. Oh, you know what, I've got glue right here. Uh, all right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. And then we'll go down and see if we can't get a battery. I was worried there for a minute because I didn't see the wrench appearing on my hot bar. I should take my bike, yeah. Ooh, does my bike have a battery in it? No, it's got nothing. It's got nothing. We gotta find a car. I assume a car will come from 
Nope. I assume a battery will come from a car. So we gotta find a car. Man. Somebody done jacked all the cars already. It was me. Oop, here we go. Shady Tree Auto. You know what, though? I didn't re redo my bedroll, and it's getting close to nighttime. I feel like I should drop a bedroll out here. Before I get killed. Uh, so last night was our weekly D&D game. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it had a couple of moments, a couple of moments. So I kind of, I kind of feel like I try, I try not to meta my games, right? Uh, meta means using knowledge that the character doesn't have but I have. I try not to. And, uh, and so, um, last night, last night was tough. I, uh, we're super close to our next level and I'd really, really like to hit that next level. Um, and there's also a little bit of spite involved in getting that next level because, um, as I've discussed many times when discussing the D and D game, uh, nope, okay, I already got that one. Uh, our DM lies, and not in a not in a, a character that we talk to lies, but as in our DM lies to us about what he's doing and then pretends that, you know, everything he does is on the up and up. Can I tear this apart? This doesn't have a battery. It did count as an engine though. That's funny. A little disappointed by this auto place. Not enough car. No batteries. Let me check this little shed here. Nope. Okay. Um, and so... And then on top of that, the adventure we're doing is poorly worded in spots. And he is not able to make the leap from the poorly worded to what maybe supposed to happen and um and uh and then he he hates that the monsters we fight lose and don't kill us and so he's always changing things to make it there's not going to be a car inside the church i can't imagine there's a double Double garage over here, though. And uh, and so last night we got a little bit of all that. Um, the the meta thing. I I want to go up my next level. I know how much XP we need to go up the next level, and we're close. Uh, I thought maybe we could make it last night. We didn't. Um, so maybe. Uh, most probably next week we will make it. We got about half of what we needed last night. And, uh, and so the issue, the issue is, is that, um, so the, the book is, uh, the adventure that we're playing is a series of dungeons, it pretends that they're all the same dungeon, but every floor is different. And there's no cohesive flow to what's going on as we work our way through the dungeon, right? It's just every 
everything is different. And uh, like one floor was a cave with a underground lake, and the next floor was a uh, uh, was a uh, forest that magically had sunshine. And now the floor we're on is a series of tombs and museums and temples, right? There's no flow from one to the next. And it makes no sense because most of it is supposed to have been um, this ancient dwarven city thing. And uh, did I get a battery yet? No. And so it's weird to me that none of it fits together. Like, I don't know why you would make your thing like this. Like, I, I get maybe that you would do this so that, you know, players could just pick a single dungeon out of the book to do, I guess. But then why not just make a book of dungeons? They've got one of those already. So why not just do another? Why... Why set this up like it's supposed to be a single adventure kind of thing? Um, there aren't enough quests. There, there isn't enough storyline. I don't... I've... One of the things that doesn't help with the meta part of this game is that I don't know... I don't know how my character is supposed to feel about things. And that's on me, on how my character is supposed to feel about things. So... D&D &D is a, a bit of a story. And uh, and so uh, the idea is that, to me, the idea is that you, uh, you make a character and it's like playing a, a, a video game, right? When you play a video game that's got a storyline, you play a character. And so then that character goes through the storyline. Well, D&D &D is like that, but there's no storyline and so, all right, I'm not going to find a car in here. Uh, I'm a little disappointed, man. No battery yet. You'd think that I'd managed to find a battery by now. Squirch. Unless you have to make a battery. Which could be problematic. I guess we could go find... Pharmacies. I think pharmacies often have um, often have uh, chemistry stations in them, right? I don't know. Guess we'll keep trying the cars. So um, I don't know. I don't feel like my character is. Uh, ooh, let's go. Let's go explore a dungeon. Like, why Why would you ever do that? Ooh, let's go explore a dungeon. So, it feels weird. Like, like, I could, I could, I could with a, just a simple little change make this a totally different game than the one we're playing. And that would be, what if we worked for a museum? What if we were hired by a museum to delve into the dungeon of the Mad Mage uh, to acquire ancient relics that were in the dungeon of the Mad Mage? Nothing has changed about the layout of the game, what's going on on the dungeons, but now I have a purpose. And... Uh, uh, and you know, like like my DM could have looked through and looked on the floors to see what kind of things might be on each of the floors. Now, like the first floor, first floor would be tough because lots of people are on the first floor. But some of these later floors, uh, some of these later floors could have been more like that. Like we just, we just about have finished a floor that is a museum and set of tombs. Um, you know? So just a simple little change like that would make me feel like we're doing something. 
Uh, but currently, I just feel like we're wandering around with no purpose. And, uh, and so because of that, and the fact that there's very little in the way of treasure, um, there's some, but n almost none of it is like, seriously, like last night, like we don't need money. There's nothing to buy. Our DM does not provide us with shopping opportunities, really. Uh, he, uh, uh, one of the things that has helped us out is that he's playing a character that can make magic items. And so his desire to be important to the group is uh, outweighing uh, his uh, hatred for us to get ahead in the magic item department. I thought that might be the case here. Uh, Nice. That means I can put on my um, water purifier and be able to um, take advantage of I don't know what because I don't I don't run out of water really. I like having it though. And uh, uh, so with the meta, like, I, I really feel like we're just wandering around, and I, uh, I don't like it. I, I like a purpose. And then, like, at the back of the book is this whole page of rumors about what's happening in the dungeon, just to give you, you know, some things that you can reveal to your players and so we stayed in town for a full over a week last night um it's said not done um we just say oh yeah we're gonna hang out in town for a bit we own our own place and stuff so it's not like uh it's not like it's an issue and uh where's my bike and so, um, so we did get some upgrades that we paid for and, uh, but that's the thing is that we've paid for all of our upgrades. Um, I don't, th I don't think other than some potions and some spell scrolls that I don't really like to use spell scrolls, um, mostly because I don't the rules on them are weird and I never understand how to how to handle the rules. Uh, it's weird to me that there's a spell scroll. I think I think last night I might have figured out what the difference is because there are scrolls that you can use and then there are scrolls that have spells on them and they're different. Uh, and so I'm pretty sure the way it works is if a spell scroll says it casts at a certain level battery yet how am I supposed to get out of here if you don't give me a battery also let's go ahead and get unencumbered here so um, it's really hard to see at night I don't like that. Uh, here's another, another garage, maybe. No, this one's already been cleaned out. And um, so I really want to go up my next level anyways, because uh, I, I feel like that's the only thing I can focus on because there's no loot, there's no treasure. Uh, oh, oh, I was going to give an example of the treasure in this particular adventure. So we're six floors down, and 
uh, six floors out of 23, but still six floors down. Most games quit uh, around the level we're at um, on average. And so it's rare for a game to continue much past the point that we currently are. And uh, whereas this particular adventure is supposed to run you all the way to uh, level 20, um, which is, I've never played a game that goes that far. Um, they Most of them run out around level 10 to 14, and we're almost to level 10. And so uh, we're on the sixth floor down, and last night we uh, we fought our way through um, a couple of animated suits of armor that were guarding a tomb. The tomb is sealed. We unseal the tomb. And all that was in there, all that was in there was <laughs> the mouthpiece to a tuba. Not a magic tuba. Just a regular old tuba. That was it. That was that was our reward last night for fighting our way into and opening a sealed tomb. The mouthpiece of a tuba. That's what's in the book. The mouthpiece of a tuba. Seriously. So, no treasure, no story, just not even really fights half the time. Most of the time we just wander around uh, clearing the map, looking for things to do. And uh, uh, and so I just I'm not liking this particular campaign and I really wish that the other guy had started running a campaign like he said he was going to because at least it would give us an every other week off kind of thing. If I had more time, I would sit something up, but it's uh it's not it takes a little bit of time to make a campaign and I would want to make a campaign. I wouldn't want to run a pre-existing campaign. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Do not think that I'm saying I don't think that that's a good thing. I'm just saying that I would like to run a no my own campaign uh, rather than... Is this going to take me out of town? No, okay. So I've just basically gone around in a circle because this is my, my home base and I still have not found a battery. This is awful. This is awful. All right, well, let's take what we got, I guess, back up. I'm not really enjoying the riding around in the dark looking for battery. So, um, so yeah, so I kind of met uh, at how much XP we need, and I got in a bit of an argument with the DM last week. Um, not not like a real argument like we like to argue as friends kind of thing you know uh and uh, uh so he uh he's of the belief that the book the book says i he's not of the belief it's what the book says the book says that the um the levels are laid out according to player level. That's what the book says. Uh, and I agree, that's what the book says. What the book also says, though, is that um, you can't... Uh, or no, what the book says is uh, if a player wants to go to 
the next floor and they haven't made their level yet, they're welcome to just understand that the fights are going to be tougher. Um, but my DM, uh, my DM thinks that um, it's not that the fights are tougher, it's that the levels are sealed and you can't go to the next level. Ooh. Which is not true. It's not the case at all. Uh, according to the book. So I don't know why he locks us in like that. I don't I don't particularly enjoy that. Uh, I guess I could travel to the next town then. Uh, let's go check this one. Because I barely checked that one. Because it's all fiery town. And I'm not a big fan of fiery town. So maybe we can... Will you go down the stairs? So, uh, we argued over... <gasps> Great. Well, let's, uh, let's climb back up so I can get my splint. Can I climb a ladder? Oh. Seriously, man, I need you to operate using the ladders correctly. I just pressed jump and backwards to jump onto the block behind me, and instead of doing that, he started climbing the ladder. So, uh, we argued on whether or not we could get our level before doing the next floor. Because the book says that it should take floor... Um, I don't even know how, I don't know, like, I don't know how people are playing this game. Um, but the, uh, the book says that we should be, uh, it should take us floor six and seven to get to level 10, but we're going to hit level 10 before we get to the next floor. And so, uh, we argued whether or not there was enough XP on the floor to do it. Uh, which is very meta, which is not something my my character should care about. And uh, But I don't know what my character should care about. Because we don't even have, like... Like, nothing, nothing in here is something that I feel like my character would care about. I don't even think my character wants the bar that we have. I just... I don't know. I don't know. I... I know that's on me. I know it's on me that I should care about the things that are going on in the game. But there's nothing going on in the game. Like, it was one thing where we're like, oh, look, we're doing stuff for Volo. Uh, you know? And, uh, you know, that was cool. Well, Volo doesn't have anything to do with this now. Uh, that was a quest. And the quests are done. Uh, and then... It's a real blow. It's a real blow when you go in and uh, the f second quest you get is, uh, and you get it, it, when I say second quest, I mean like Volo gave us a quest and then this woman gave us a quest and then we entered the dungeon for the first time. So we, we enter the dungeon for the first time and the woman says, <laughs> the... <laughs> And that guy tried so hard to get up here. And then he just keeled over dead. Uh, the woman says, My brother has gone missing. Uh, he's wearing this ring. Oh. Please. Please bring my brother back. Dang it. Zombie woman. Uh, and, uh, so we get in there, and I, she doesn't know where he's at, okay? So we have to explore, we have to explore the dungeon looking for this guy. Oh. And, uh, so he's not on floor one. But I think, I think floor one, uh, we found this thing that gave us three answers, and so, 
uh, one of the questions we asked was where this guy was at. And so we were told he's on floor three. Uh, or he, he's dead. Uh, and his killer is on the northwest corner of floor three. Like, all right. Well, we can't get to floor three because we're locked. We're not allowed to go to floor two until we get to level six. We're not allowed to go to floor three until we get to level seven. So I guess I say meta, but it's kind of the thing that we're focused on. There's my battery. And, uh, and so, I mean, that's what our DM has us focused on, is getting the levels so that we can move to the next floor. Uh, although in this case, we don't need the level to go to the next floor. We could just go to the next floor. Um, but I want to take advantage of a couple of things that we've discovered in the course of our game. One of them is a bunch of uh, high-level demons that are like our level to fight, um, but they're sealed in statues. And so I want to kill them because that will definitely, definitely put us into our next level. Killing those four demons will definitely get us to level 10. Uh, and there's a bunch of other stuff that we just skipped on the previous floors. So it's not like we've been hounding after the XP. It just happens that we got really close to our level on this floor. And I wanted to see if we could do it before we left. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, we finished exploring most of the floor last night. And we got way more experience than I was expecting. Uh, and so we're uh, we're only a couple thousand points away and I think just two of the demons um, I think just two of the demons will put us pretty close to um, to where we need to be I need to put some lights on this thing so I can find it in the dark man Oosh. Uh, but yeah, uh, so anyways, uh, so we, uh, oh, the quest, right? I was running through this quest to just to explain my frustrations. So she's not on floor one, uh, or he's not on floor one. So we have to go ahead and get through, um, get through the other floors. Uh, and so we got to get to level seven and... So we, we we have to earn level 7, is what I mean by that. We don't have to get to floor 7. We have to earn level 7. And um, nice. And there we go. One mini bike coming up. No more pedaling. No more being out of stamina trying to get from one place to the other. Now it's just going to be out of gas, right? Uh, and, uh, so we fight our way through floor one, which has got two groups of actors pretending to be vampires who are charging people money to go through the floor. And then we go to floor two, uh, floor two is where we first run into, uh, I think, Xanathar's Guild um, in the dungeon, which is a group of thieves that are run by a... Well, an information broker runs this guild of thieves. And then um, uh, there was like a goblin town that we dealt with a little bit. and uh, And the drow that are there... And I think that was it. And then we get to floor three finally, right? And so on floor three, we're like, yes, finally. We've spent weeks, weeks getting here. And uh, And so we're finally here. And then we get to the northwest corner, and the guy's like, yeah, no, I want this ring. 
Well, can we pay for it? No, I want this ring. Can we steal it? No, there's too many people watching. We spent weeks getting here. I just want to gut him and take the ring then. And then it's like, oh, well, his his wife motions for you to move over. I'm like, okay. And, uh... And then she's like, look, he he lost his sight. Nobody knows it. Yay. And uh, he was using this r dagger to, um, to make sure that people didn't know that he was blind. And the dagger was taken by these Durgar. And uh, if you can get the dagger back, I think I can trade it for the knife. <sighs> okay. Where did the Durgar go? They went down to the next floor. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so the next section down was the city. So we go to the next section. Well, nobody will tell us about the Durgar in the next section. Uh, we basically had to kill all the guards in a bar and force the guy to tell us where the Durgar had gone, because our DM would not tell us where the Durgar had gone. Uh, like, didn't let us roll persuasion. Had uh, one character who's not good at this stuff roll intimidation, and because he didn't roll high enough, we couldn't intimidate it. Didn't let the bard do the talking. No, no, he said that it was my fighter who had to do the talking. Uh, because he doesn't really like to let us have choices. Uh, and uh, so so we find out that Durgar have gone deeper. Now this is this is in between floor three and four. So we had to get to floor we had to get to level. We had to acquire the experience level of six to get to floor two, seven to get to floor three. Find out the Durgar have gone on. So to get to floor four, we had to be at level eight. To get to floor five, we had to be at level nine. No, no, we had to be at level. We're level nine now. So we had to be yeah level nine to get to floor five. Um, and then or no no we had to be at level nine to get past floor five right. So first level was five. Second level we had to be level six to get to floor three. Seven to get to floor four. Uh, eight to get to floor five. Supposed to earn uh, level nine on floor five, but nothing happens. And the book says you're supposed to get the experience for not killing the animals that you would normally get um, for killing the things that are on floor five. But our DM was like, you only get XP in my games for killing things, and you didn't kill anything, so you get an XP. And so I was like, well, how do we go to the next level then? smarty because you won't let us go to the next level unless we're the appropriate level and now you're telling me that we can't get the XP unless we kill the things that we agreed not to kill that seems a little weird uh oh man I'm out of food and uh so uh Oops. Oh, where did all that come from? So, um, he gives us the XP to go to the next floor. The Durgar with the dagger on floor six. So at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of the game, before we entered the dungeon, we were given a quest. And that quest has led us to floor six to solve it. That is a level on one, a level on two, a level on three, a level on four. Um, I think I think once you hit four, it was a level on four and five to get to level nine, so you could go to floor six. Uh, and uh, and so 
like that's a long time of play. That's like everything people do in an adventure and then call it quits. Our last adventure was five levels long. Five levels. We've already done basically our whole previous adventure at this point just to f finish the first quest that we were given basically. And when we get back, when we get back, our reward for completing a quest that took us six levels and gave us no treasure was a favor. Her family now owes us a favor. Which would be great if we were playing a game that involved intrigue or something going on in the city, but no. What kind of favor can we get from people we never talk to and we don't know what they do? But she'll give us a favor at some point in the future that we ask for. I'm like, this is this is the worst. We went, we did so much stuff, and then we got nothing for it. Nothing. I hate these quests. Or like, or like, <laughs> they got these dumb gateways everywhere that you can't use. Unless you can figure out the, the puzzle and you're the appropriate level to use them. That's in the book. You have to be the appropriate level to use them. And the first time you use them, it could kill you. I really don't enjoy this Dungeon the Mad Mage. It's, it's terrible. It's the worst adventure we have run so far. Um, and, uh, and you know what? I don't even like my character I'm playing. I feel like at this point... Uh, everybody talks about, I'm going to quit here, but everybody talks about how much they love or how, how the battle master fighter is the best fighter. And I'm just like, I don't see it. He's clunky. He's not fun. He doesn't get bonuses to his combat. Um, he gets <laughs> at level seven, you only get so many upgrades, uh, for your subclass. And so battle master is a subclass of fighter. And one of his things is, if he spends a minute observing his opponent, he can learn a little bit of information about them. But he's not a talker. So it's not like it's helpful to observe someone while you're talking to them. Uh, it's a battle thing, but it takes a minute and a minute in battle means the battle's over because most fights don't last longer than three or four rounds of combat. So I'm not sure where that's ever going to come into play. And then the other thing he's got are these dice that you, you have a limited amount of, I think I've got five, five dice I can use. And they only come back if you take a short rest uh, and like we did our whole session last night without a short rest. So five times during our entire two and a half hour session last night, I could have used his special abilities five times, um, total. In fact, I, I tried to use this special ability once and it failed. So I lost one dice there. Um, I, I did a thing, uh, to give people advantage on their next attack because we were fighting um, something that was giving us a disadvantage. I managed to land that. And then uh, my last one was just straight up added damage because I rolled a crit finally last night. And um, I got one critical hit last night. And uh, multiple, multiple ones, which means that your attack just doesn't land. But only one 20 that means that you're automatically hit and do extra damage. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not enjoying the battle master, but I'm going to keep playing it because I feel like you can't talk about it if you haven't played it. And I want to make sure that I play it so that I can really talk about how much I do not like it. I like the champion fighter, which is the most simple of the fighters is the champion fighter. Uh, and I like him the best. Uh, I've played multiple fighters because I like that class. And, um, well, I play multiple fighters. I guess I don't necessarily like that class, but, uh, I mean, I do. My fighter is probably my favorite character. Uh, but, uh, 
not this guy, the guy from a previous campaign. And um, so I do like fighters. I think I would rather play a wizard or something, but I also feel you can't have a party without someone to uh, get in the face of the enemy. And the people I play with tend not to choose the character that's going to get in the face of the enemy. And so someone's got to do it. Uh, and so far, so far, uh, I've never played a campaign where someone else chooses the fighter. Uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I always have to play a fighter and then usually there aren't enough of us to play four characters. So I wind up playing two characters. So I do get to play something else, but then it decreases the enjoyment of the story interaction because then I have two characters and then I'm just like, I don't know which one to use and they've got different personalities and I wish I could just play one character and stick with it, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, that's not true. Uh, my favorite fighter, I got to play him and uh, he was the only one I played in that campaign and it was awesome. All right, with that, I am going to call it, which is good because I went way over. So with that, be better in the small things, lean into the light, and I will talk to you later.